Printing a full page pattern on the one side of your page to fake a double-sided print is way easier than a true double-sided print and cut. You can use this method on product backing cards, business cards, invitations, bookmarks, gift tags, and so much more. And while a true double-sided print and cut is possible, it is really tricky to get right and has a lot of room for error. This method is a lot easier and speeds up the making process for all of our fun projects. I'm going to show you what files you need to look out for, as well as two free ways that you can achieve this full page pattern print look so that you can elevate your projects. My name is Kelly Rousseau, and let's get clacking. Now, all of the links that you're going to need in order to follow along with this project will be down in the description, as well as the links to the blog posts if you prefer to follow along with blogs as well as the video. We're first going to take a look at the file type that you're going to need. Now, you can use many different file types for this, but the one that you should use to get the absolute best results is going to be a seamless or repeatable pattern image. A seamless pattern is an image that can be placed next to itself over and over again and not appear to be multiple different images. The pattern flows effortlessly over a large space. And while many images may be patterns, not all patterns are repeatable or seamless patterns. Although you can use them, in order to get the best result, they may not be perfectly suitable for this project. So while you're choosing your image file, make sure that you're specifically looking out for a repeatable or a seamless pattern, as that's going to be the easiest way to get the best result. But now we're going to explore the methods that we're going to cover in order to achieve our full page pattern. I'm going to be using the free version of both Silhouette Studio and Canva for this tutorial. And while you may be tempted to use the timestamps below to skip to the Canva method, I urge you to give the Silhouette Studio route a try. It is much easier to get a much better result and to be able to duplicate the same kinds of results to have multiple different backgrounds using Silhouette Studio. It is a very easy process and I'm going to cover everything step by step, so don't stress about not knowing the software at all. The first method, using Silhouette Studio. As Silhouette Studio Basic Edition is free, you can download it and install it to your computer. Visit kellyrousseau.com slash sil, S-I-L, dash studio to be able to go to the downloads page. You can easily download and use the software even if you don't have a Silhouette machine. Now, it won't really matter too much which version of the software that you use. I'm using quite an old version, the 4.5.760. So all you need to do is just click on either Windows or Mac, depending on which computer you have. And once you've downloaded it and installed it to your computer, you can open up Silhouette Studio. Step one, setting up our canvas for the repeatable pattern in Silhouette Studio. On the right hand side of the screen, you're going to see the page setup section. This is where you change the white area of your page that is essentially your canvas where your design will print. I want you to change the settings to match what I have on my screen. We're going to make the machine selection none. The cutting mat selection is also going to be none. Thirdly, we're going to select the media size. Now this will be related to whatever paper you're going to be printing on. So if you're going to be using an A4 page, set that as A4. If you're going to be using a letter page, make sure that it is set to letter. Mine is set to A4. And then at the bottom of the screen, we're going to look at the print and cut borders. So make sure that the box is ticked where it says show print border. That is this little gray line that we see on the edge of our page, our white page. On the top left of your screen, you're going to hover over the little rectangle that says drawing tools. And we're going to move over to where it says draw a rectangle. We're going to click on that. Now our mouse changes to a little crosshair. So we're going to hover our mouse in the top left hand corner of our page, click and drag it all the way down to the bottom right. Now you'll notice that the red line is our box that we're going to be creating is on the outside of the gray line. So we just want to make sure that it's on the outside. If it's not quite on the outside, you can use these little boxes to drag it over. If your mouse is still the crosshair, 
then you're going to just need to click escape to change it back to the mouse cursor. Step two, setting up our pattern in Silhouette Studio. Open the folder where your patterns have been saved. I'm using these patterns from Creative Fabrica as they have lots of seamless patterns that I can use and I will leave the link down below. So I'm going to choose a pattern, click and drag it into Silhouette Studio. And you'll notice that it automatically fills the red line box with the image that we have dragged into it. If it looks like this, then just move the cursor back over to the box. It is essentially filling that box that we have with our pattern and you can release. We're going to click into Silhouette Studio and on the right hand side of the screen, you will see an art palette. We're going to click on that one. That is the fill panel. Then in the top left hand corner of the fill panel, you will see it says fill pattern. We're going to click on that. And the only real section that we're going to worry with are going to be the features down here. The scale is the one that we're going to mostly play around with. With your pattern selected, you can either increase the scale, which will zoom in on your image, or you can decrease the scale, which will zoom out. And you can see how Silhouette automatically scales everything for you. And you can play around with it and see what kind of scale you like. And with a lot of patterns, I like to change the angle as well. So you can also play around with the angle section to rotate your design a little bit if you like. Step three printing our pattern. Once you are happy with the way that your design looks, you can click File, Print. And it will show you a print preview of what your page is going to look like. Then if you are happy with what it looks like, you can just click Print, select the printer that you're going to use, click Preferences to make sure that your print settings are correct for the paper that you are using click OK, and then click Print. If you like the way your pattern is set up, I highly encourage you to save this project. So we're going to go File, Save, and save it to your computer. And when it comes to Silhouette Studio, that is as simple as it is for creating your design. And this is a bonus step, easily creating many more pattern pages. Now the added bonus of using Silhouette Studio is that if you have multiple different images that you want to create patterns from, you can quite literally just take the next pattern in your folder and drag it onto the page and it retains all of those settings. If you don't quite like the way this one is set up because patterns do end up being a little bit different, you can then adjust it a little bit more if you want to maybe zoom in a little bit more or a little bit less and you can print that page. And then you can drag the next pattern in and you can print that straight away. So that's why I like to use this method because creating multiple different pages with different backgrounds is ridiculously easy. And if you are enjoying this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. I'm going to create videos on a few different projects that are going to be using this method. So make sure that you are subscribed so that you can get alerts about those. The next method is the Canva method that we're going to go over. Step one, setting up our Canva document. So on the home screen, we're going to click Create Design. And again, you're going to choose whatever size the paper is that you are going to be using. I'm going to be using A4, so I'm going to select A4. And then we need to upload our design into Canva. So I'm going to click on Uploads on the left-hand side of the screen upload files and upload the image that I want to use into Canva. Step two, setting up our repeatable pattern in our Canva document. Once your image has uploaded, you're going to click on it to add it to your canvas. Drag it to the top left hand corner of the screen and resize it for however big you want your pattern image to be. We're going to right click and duplicate and move this one across so that it is next to that image. What you can do then is continue to duplicate your images so that they fill up the entire page. 
But before we get too carried away, I want to take a closer look at the borders of these images. The one downside of using Canva is that it doesn't quite line up your images exactly next to each other. There ends up being this little white line at the edge of the images and you pretty much have to manually close those together. So I want to just click on that image and using my mouse, just moving it over just a tiny bit. We need to zoom in really close to make sure that there are no gaps in between our images. And once we're happy with that, we can duplicate them a little bit more. And every time we move it, we just want to make sure that the gaps don't show. And then we can continue to tile our page. Now, when using this method, you need to make sure that the borders are aligned because if they are just slightly out, it will mess up your pattern a little bit. It is also more difficult to change the size and the angle using this method. So if you want to rotate your design, you will then need to fill in those little gaps where they are there and fill in those ones there. Making sure that they again line up so that the there is no white line in between them. Step three, printing our pattern. Now you cannot print directly from Canva. So once you're finished with your design, we're going to click share download and then we're going to click download again it will then download the image to your computer you're going to open the file where you saved your image or your downloads folder right click on it and click print now this may look different depending on your printer and your software but once again you're going to need to configure your printer settings to match the paper that you're printing on. So you can change that to high, change that to matte paper, and then you can click print. But if you want to see what kinds of projects I end up using this method on, check out this playlist over here. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you in the next one. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.